Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to describe how you can create your own packages that Portage can work with using eBuilds. Now I briefly covered some of this in my previous video on creating your own eBuild repository. I used a pre-existing eBuild in that case to install the Artha dictionary. And if you haven't watched that video, I recommend you go ahead and watch it first before watching this video because in that video I showed you how to create a custom eBuild repository on your own Gentoo machine. And this video is going to kind of be a follow-up on that because we're actually going to install our custom eBuild in that repository that we created in that video. But the main focus of this video will be on actually creating a eBuild from scratch for a program that you created yourself and then using that eBuild to install that program just like any other program on Gentoo. Now for those that don't know, eBuilds are a file type that Portage, the Gentoo package manager, uses to actually download, compile, and install programs onto your Gentoo system. Now anybody can make an eBuild as long as they follow along with the syntax and basically any program that can be installed by a user manually can be installed by Portage as well. You can get some information on how the eBuild syntax works by running man5ebuild and this is the manual page that discusses the as it says here, internal format variables and functions of an eBuild script. This is a pretty sizable page, but it can give you a really good overview of how eBuilds work and what all the different syntax means. In this video, however, I'm going to show you how to create an eBuild from scratch, a very simple one, uh, and we're going to use it to install an extremely simple program that I actually wrote here. It's called eBuild Example, and it's up on my GitHub, and it's just an extremely simple C program, basically a Hello World type program. You can check it out here that it will just print out this simple little message. Very basic, simple, straightforward C program. And the only other important thing of note that it includes is a make file. Now this is a very bare bones make file. I'm sure that those who make lots of make files could find tons of problems with this small one that I whipped up here. But the important thing is this make file includes the install functionality that is present in some make files, which means that when you run make install, it will actually do something and try to install it on your system. Now, as I said, it's just a very simple, straightforward make file. If you don't really understand C and you don't really understand make files, you really don't have to in order to be able to make eBuilds for this video. Now here on my GitHub page, another thing that's important is that I have a release over here, eBuild example 0.2. That's the actual version of the program that we're going to install. In fact, what we're interested in installing on our Gentoo system is this .tar.gzip file right here. This particular file is what Portage will go out and download and decompress and install on our system in order to, and decompress and install on our system in order for this program to work. Okay, the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to navigate to the custom repository that we made in the previous video. If you'll recall, it was located in var db repos custom one. As you can see here, the only thing that's in here are the metadata and profiles directories that we created before, as well as the app dictionaries that we put the Artha example eBuild in before. Now, this particular Hello World program is obviously not actually a very useful program, so it's perhaps a little difficult to decide what category it goes in. There are probably best practices with regards to publicly facing overlays or the Gentoo tree itself that determine which specific categories you should put your packages under, but for the sake of simplicity, we're actually going to be putting this package in the app miscellaneous category. So we're going to need to create a directory to put this eBuild we're going to create in. And as I said, we're going to put it in the app miscellaneous directory, and it's going to be called eBuild example, same as the repo on GitHub is. So we'll create that. And you might recall from my previous video that it's important that we make sure these directories are owned by user portage group portage. So we'll run chown recursively on app miscellaneous. And if we ls out again, we can see that that category belongs to portage. So we can change directories into app miscellaneous ebuild example. And we're ready to do our work here in this directory. Okay, to begin with, you can see there's nothing in here. The first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create the eBuild itself. Now, the best way to do this is actually from the default eBuild template that is included with Gentoo. If you use Vim, you can actually get a copy of this default template by running Vim with dot forward slash, like you were running a script in the local directory, and then any kind of file name that ends with dot eBuild. If you do this, Vim will automatically pull in the template that Gentoo includes for default eBuilds. Now there's a plugin for Emacs that will also allow Emacs to do something similar to this, um, but I use Vim, 
So Vim is the way that we're going to go with here. If you don't use Vim or Emacs, if you use like Nano or something for all of your editing, or maybe a GUI editor, then this file should be located in whatever your default portage install location is, and it's called header.txt. Okay, now as before with the Arthur example in the previous video, the name of the eBuild is important, and it follows a specific syntax. First, we want the name of the package that we're trying to install, eBuild example in this case, followed by a hyphen, and then the version number, 0.2, and then dot eBuild. That'll be the name that we'll need in order to install eBuild example 0.2 here on this system. So we'll go ahead and run that. It takes a moment, and here you can see we have the template for a default EAPI 7 Gen 2 eBuild. And from here we can make modifications and actually make this program, this eBuild example script, something that we can install here on our system, the same as any other program. Okay, I'm going to explain line by line what all of this stuff means here. The top here, obviously, is a comment that includes copyright information about this particular file, this template file here that we're using. The first important and noteworthy line here is this EAPI equals 7. This informs us which version of the package manager specification that this eBuild is going to conform to. This is important for portage purposes because different versions of the package manager specification make some important distinctions with regards to eBuild syntax and things like that. If you're familiar with like the difference between ANSI versions of C, you can kind of think of it like that. Basically, this line is just informing Portage which version of eBuild syntax that we're going to be using in this file. The next line here is the description line, and it is equal to this empty string. Now, description can be basically anything. We could put any kind of text that we want to right here. We can say something similar to this is a description but you are ostensibly supposed to put a line here describing what this program actually does. So since we know this is a simple eBuild example hello world program, we can say something in the description line like simple eBuild demo. That's a perfectly valid descriptive string to describe this program. Now it's important to note that the description is necessary in order for the eBuild to run. You have to have the description as part of your eBuild. So even though it seems kind of superfluous if you always have to include it. Now the next line right here is the home page line. Now this is supposed to be a URL to a website that is the home page of the program that we're installing here. Now I'm just going to include here the GitHub page for this program since it doesn't really have an actual home page. But if you do have like a website associated with your program then you'll want to include it here. Now the next important line here is source URI. SRC underscore URI. As the variable name indicates this is a URI a universal resource identifier, meaning that it can be various protocol formats. For this particular one, we're going to download over HTTPS. And the contents of this string should be the location of a compressed tarball containing our package that we wanted to include. If you recall, I said that the GitHub page has this .tar.gzip file in the releases section. That will actually be what we want to link to directly here in the source URI. So I can copy the link location here and paste it in Vim. Now, one thing that is good practice with the source URIs is to use built-in portage variables for the name of the program and its version number so that you don't have to go back and manually change it later if you do an update to your eBuild. Now, what I mean by that is there are a couple of important variables that Portage includes that will be useful to us here. The first one is going to be the PN variable. This is the package name. Now, PN in our case, in, e, in the case of this eBuild, would be equal to simply the string eBuild example like this right here. So by including it here in the source URI, you could replace it one for one with this eBuild example right here. It still means the same thing as the URL did before. But by making it a variable name, if anything ever were to change with the name of this variable, we wouldn't have to come back in and change it later. Now the next important thing that we'll want to do is replace the name of the program and the version number with the variable P. Now, P is just that. It's the name of the program and the version number put together. It would be eBuild-0.2. But now when an eBuild-0.3 comes out, we can just change the name of the eBuild, and we won't have to come in here and manually change P in this case. You will see PN and P used quite frequently in eBuild, so you should get familiar with what they mean and what they do. PN is the program name, and regular P is the name plus the version. Now, the next line here is the license line. The license for this package, as you can see on my repo on GitHub, is the GPL 3.0 license. You'll want to specify that here in this line of the eBuild because this is what Gentoo's built-in licensing checking 
uses to determine whether or not the package can be installed on your system based on your licensing policy. For instance, this is where something like a EULA that a company uses would go to inform those who had their Gen 2 installation configured to only install free programs that they couldn't install this program based on their licensing policy. Now the next important line here is the slot equals zero line. Now slots are a built-in way that Gen 2 can install multiple versions of the same packages. By saying slot equals zero, we're saying in this ebuild that we don't want to use the slots functionality. The next line here is keywords, and we'll need to make a couple of modifications here because keywords are how Gentoo determines important things like what architectures this package is considered stable for. As you can see here, there are these tilde marks beside AMD64 and x86. These imply that this package is by default considered unstable on these two architectures. Now in normal cases, if your package is not production ready, then it probably is a good idea to leave these keyword masks, that's what these tilde signs are, on, because that will force the user to change their configuration file if they want to install your unstable program, thus explicitly confirming that they understand the risks of doing so. But because we just have a simple Hello World C program, we're not so worried about that. So we're going to remove these tildes and go ahead and say that this package is stable on AMD64 and x86. Okay, the next line here is I use equals and then a blank string. This should be a list of all of the use flags that your package is going to be able to use. According to Man5Ebuild, the only use flags that shouldn't be included here are architecture keywords, like AMD64 and x86. Every other use flag that your package is going to use should go in here. Now, we don't have any use flags, and that would add a layer of complexity that's a little bit outside of the scope of this video anyway. So we're going to leave this one blank, and it can be blank. Okay, I'm going to go over the next three lines pretty quickly. Now, these are the depend, r depend, and v depend lines. Now, depend, the first line here, represents all of the packages that have to be on your system in order for your program to compile. These are the hard dependencies of your program, so if you make use of some specific library, you would want to include it here. Now, all we need on our system in order for this C program to run is going to be a C compiler, the make file calls for GCC, and the regular C standard library. Now, since those are included in a default Gentoo install, I'm not putting them here in the dependency list, but if you don't have GCC installed, since the make file specifically calls out to it, you may want to either modify the make file for your purposes or put GCC in as a dependency here and let it be installed on your system as part of running this program. The next one is rdepend. This includes a non-blank string that is the value of the depend variable up here. All previously defined variables here in this ebuild can be referred to in this simple syntax here with the dollar sign and then open and closing curly brackets. Now what rdepend represents is all of the runtime dependencies of your program. That is all of the packages that have to be installed on Gentoo in order for this program to run. Similarly, the last one here, bdepend, is all of the programs that have to be installed and running on your system in order for the package to work. That is, bdepend is all of the packages on your system that have to be executable, presumably because they're referred to by name somewhere in your program itself. They are sometimes called native build dependencies, and so any programs that your program specifically calls out to should go in here. Now I should mention that these are space delimited lists of package names. For instance, if our program depended on app Dictionaries Artha, which we have installed on our custom repository, this is how we would add it in here to the depend string. Okay, we're going to have to make a few more further modifications in order to get this ebuild to be functional for our ebuild example package. The first is we're going to have to add a definition for the s variable. Now, s represents the path to the temporary build directory, and this is actually going to be where Portage is going to take the package and build it and then install it on your system. Now, we want to change this to include the work directory forward slash and then the program name hyphen the program name and version and then we can close the string. Now, this is specifically where we're going to have to tell Portage to install this. I did a lot of testing and for whatever reason, this is the directory that Portage wants S to be pointing to, so you have to explicitly tell it, in this case, to point S to that working directory so that it can use the correct building directory. Now, the last thing that we're going to want to add is a source underscore install function. Now, this is an ebuild function that we can define ourselves to specify how Portage actually should make 
and install this particular package. Source install basically can do anything that you need it to do in order for your package to be created correctly and installed correctly. Now we have a very simple line that we want to include in source install. We want to say make and then we want to say dest dir, the destination directory, equals d. Now d is the path to the temporary install directory. It's important to include this when you do make examples and source install for C programs in eBuilds because you want to make sure that they are installed in the place that Forge is expecting them. And then we want to say install and then failing that we want to die, that is fail, with the error message make install failed. And then we're going to close this off with a closing bracket. Now this simple function that we've just defined here is basically just a one-liner bash script that's going to cause this eBuild when it tries to install this particular package to run make install the same way we would if we had downloaded it ourselves, decompressed it, and tried to install it on our own system manually. There's no additional magic to it in any real way. Basically, this is going to cause the eBuild to depend entirely on how the make file is put together in order to be able to install this package with Portage. The die function right here basically is just saying if we fail, print out this particular error message to the standard output during emerge time. That way we know that there's some problem on our end, most likely with the make file, if we see this particular error message. And with that, we are done. We're finished with the basic e-build in order to install this simple Hello World style C program. This is really all there is to making an e-build. You generally want to start out with this template so that you can add stuff to it as you go. Now, e-builds can obviously get a lot more complex than this, but this was just a very basic, simple, straightforward one. So let's write our changes to this. And as you can see now, we have the e-build here. Let's go ahead and change ownership of that e-build to Portage Portage. and it's been changed correctly. Okay, now the next thing that we want to do is we want to run Repo Man. Now, if you followed along with the previous video, towards the end we installed App Portage Repo Man. And using this created a manifest for an e-build and then downloaded the dist files for that e-build. And that's exactly what we're going to do again. We're going to do sudo repo man manifest. And I didn't go over in depth in the previous video what this is going to do. What this will do is this will create a manifest file for the e-build that we've created, which is going to be used for determining the integrity of the e-build by Portage. And then it's going to search through all of the mirrors that are listed in our make.conf file for this particular package. And it's obviously not going to find them because this is from a GitHub of mine personally, and it's in a custom repository. So failing that, it's going to go to GitHub and it's going to download them from the source URI that is included in our eBuild example right here. So let's go ahead and run that. And it takes a moment to print all this out, so I will probably skip ahead. Okay, it's done. Repo Man has finished running, and as you can see, we now have a manifest. So that means that we are basically ready to go ahead and emerge this package. So let's go ahead and do it. Now, to begin with, I want to show you that I can run ebuild example right here. It bash ebuild example command not found. And that package is not installed on my C right now. So let's go ahead and emerge app miscellaneous ebuild example and just to be a hundred percent certain we want it to come from the repo custom one right now let's run that Forge will calculate dependencies of which there are none because we specified so in our ebuild okay and as you can see it found at miscellaneous ebuild example 02 on custom one and it's saying would you like to merge these packages and yes we would so it's going to go ahead and emerge it the same as it would any other package found anywhere else in Gentoo's default tree or in a custom overlay you added. And as you can see, it's done. So if we go ahead and run ebuild example, you can see that it prints out the correct string. So we were successful. Now obviously you probably don't want to keep this package on your system, so you can remove it with sudo emerge dash dash depth clean ebuild example and it will remove it the same as it would any other package. That's really the advantage of writing your own ebuilds here. If you do this then any program that you write that does anything no matter what it is can be handled by Portage and since we all know that Portage is the best package manager that's what we want 
We want to make our own e-builds for our own packages because we can share them with anybody else that has a working copy of Portage. It says, would I like to merge these packages? Yes, I would. And then we can go ahead and get rid of e-build example and it will no longer be on our system. All right, thank you all for watching. I know this is probably a very lengthy video. I figure it will take me a while to edit this. Um, but hopefully it was helpful to you. This is a really, really shallow overview of e-builds. E-builds are a big topic, and I could probably make another two dozen videos just on e-builds. I do want to cover them some more. In particular, I want to go over the e-build command, which is a portage command that's very, very useful for developing your own e-builds. I didn't get to it here because I wanted to demonstrate using the e-build in the same way that we use it in the previous video on making your own custom repositories. Um, but I'll probably be making lots more e-build videos in the next few weeks or so. Um, so hopefully those will be helpful to you, and hopefully this one was helpful to you too. Thank you all for watching.